it doesn't matter how many we have here tonight, it's a good number in, 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 uh, in either case, right? The most important thing is we are here to learn something from the Word of God. Praise God. Amen? Yes. Okay. Tonight I want to talk about prophecy of Christ in Christmas. Good. Because if there was no prophecy in the Old Testament, there would be no Christ. Right. And there would be no Christmas. Now we all know that, that Christ was not born on Christmas, right? right. I don't need to prove to you, to you that, right? It's just an arbitrary day. Christmas, the 725th, is not, is not Jesus' birthday. I've been lying to you all these years. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, let's not play him. <laughs> but the 725th is when we celebrate Christ and his birth. Is that okay? Is that a good explanation? You think she'll be okay with that? <laughs> well, it's up to her later. As I've told you many times this December, that I feel God has spoken to me, and He wants me to, to take all my service for the month of December out of Luke chapter 2. Okay. I thought you were going to ask us for what verse. Oh. <laughs> no, that well, which verses? Go ahead. Which verses? <laughs> Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter, chapter 2. <laughs> Today we're going to, we're going to uh, have our focus on the first seven verses. So let's read them together and let's talk about them, okay? In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to, make, to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to, to her firstborn, a son, Wrapped him, she wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. That was a little too much. As we are reading this, let's talk about the characters that we find here. Who is the first character when you put, put the verse number one up? Who is the first character that we find in Luke chapter 2, verse 1. Caesar Augustus. Caesar Augustus. Let's take a, uh, a few minutes to talk about Caesar Augustus. We're talking about the Roman emperor. Now, as we probably have learned in the past from our time together and from other sources, I'm, I'm sure you know that the, uh, the Romans, they had a custom. They were very religious. And Caesar was God yeah, to them. Yeah. They were very religious as we consider religious. And Caesar was God. Now, he wasn't the only one that was considered God. They had, you know, lots of gods, little g, of course. They had lots of gods and uh, other, other uh, nations around had other gods, little g, of course. And because Caesar, August, uh, Caesar Augustus was a god, would he want to somebody to take his place? Nope. No, of course not. And if we look at history, we find that Caesar Augustus was probably the most humane of all the Caesars. Of course, when we think of Caesar, we think, when we think of Rome, what do we think? <coughs> Nero. Nero. We think about evil, we think about perversion, we think about the Colosseums, we think about, what else we think about? Mythology. Mythology. We think of all that, right? Mm -hmm. Next time somebody says Caesar, 
or Caesar salad, you're like, oh, I know. <laughs> next time, next time you order a Caesar salad, you're going to be thinking about Rome and all of everything that was wrong with Rome. I like food. What can I say? Now, Caesar Augustus was probably the most humane ruler of that time. He actually believed himself to be a god. And as a god, he didn't need somebody else to prove to him that he was God. As a matter of fact, uh, every, every other Caesar before Caesar Augustus and after Caesar Augustus tried to prove that they were gods. Caesar Augustus was very different. However, being from Rome and being very um, into mythology and uh, all, all of that, he wanted to know how many people he had. As a matter of fact, jo Josephus, you know Josephus? Yeah. Josephus, he was a, a scholar, he was a historian of, of that time. He doesn't talk about the census. Now, does, the, does the Bible lie? No. As a matter of fact, uh, when we put verse number two on, we find another name that, that we're going to take a few minutes to talk about. And the name is? Quirinius. Josephus tells us that Quirinius does become governor until 6... Uh, 6? AD. A AD, yeah, yeah. No, was it AD? Yeah. BC. 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 Anyways, 6 something. Before Jesus was... Uh, after Jesus was born. I think AD. Yeah, it's after. yeah, probably 680. 680. Yeah, 680. There we go. I, I, I was getting confused. It's after. Uh, hold on. BC, before Christ, AD, after them. That's right. That's M and all them. But, it, but that's, that, that's where I get a little confused sometimes. Like, AD, he didn't really die. So, would this be AD? 80, yeah, so 680. Even though Jesus was born on consider, what we consider 0, eight, zero BC, AD. Anyways, not that. Huh? Piano Domini. That's what AD stood for. Piano Domini? Piano Domini. I'll take your word for that. Latin, I guess. Yeah, I will, we'll, we'll go with after that. No. <laughs> but that's the way I learned it. Um, uh, it says from 4 BC to 1 AD. That's what, oh, the, the, this, this is when the census was taken. Oh, okay. Yeah, this, the census was taken between 4 B.C. and 1 A.D. But according to Josephus, uh, Quirinius didn't become governor until 6 A.D. So, now, is that a problem for us? Because the Bible clearly says that this was the first census to, that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Is that a problem for us? Well, it is a problem. It is a problem. Because Quirinius didn't become governor until 6 AD. So it does, is the Bible lying? No. Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, we're missing about 99% of all the writings from that time. We're missing because they're not available. However, about 50, 60 years ago, there was some, some um, writing that was found that speaks about Quirinius being a governor twice. Now, the, the word that, the, that is used here as, uh, for governor, or is being a governor, doesn't exactly mean governor. Could be a ruler, could be politician. Uh, before Nancy <coughs> Pelosi was who, uh, whoever she is now, Speaker of the House. Before she became Speaker of the House, she was a, a House representative for many, many, many years. In history, she'll go down as a House of, as a House of Representative. Um, whoever writes it. Whoever writes it, whatever, how, how they write it. They're probably going to write write her in as God. the witch of the witch of the West. But anyways, uh, no, they Democrats love her. Uh, not for too long. Not for too long. Wait till the next election. Like, they'll, they'll throw her right under the bus with the rest of them. Um, but the history is going to write her in as Speaker of the House. Not all, not all the other things that she has done 
including going against everything that's godly. Different story. So Quirinius was a ruler, a governor, or maybe he was just a politician. So that word, you know, when, when you go from one language to another, it's sometimes hard to, to translate. And because somebody tries to governor, that's the way it's been going, translated. So there was some writing that was found about 50, 60 years ago that proves that Quirinius was a ruler or a politician twice. So that's how we jump over. Was they the Dead Sea Scrolls or something? It wasn't the Dead Sea Scrolls. No, no, no. There was a lot of uh, writing being found. Yeah, but this was not a biblical find. This was just a uh, finding. In historical in historical point. findings, yeah. Oh, okay. You can Google it. Everything that I tell you, uh, I you can you can double check, fact check me, and if I'm wrong, I'll tell you the next. If somebody comes up to says, uh, uh, Pastor, so you, you said this, this is wrong, I'm going to repent in front of everybody I said this, and I said this wrong. I, not everything that I say is perfectly perfectly said. But anyways. Pastor. Yes. In New King James, it says governing. Governing. So ruling, governing. Perfect. It's not governor. So I like that better. I think they re realized that the, the word was not quite correct. I like that. that that's why we have different translations yes. because sometimes yes. the wording. Thank you for that. Uh, if you if you can look up the original word, you get an extra five points per day. He's going to look it up. He's going to tell me. Uh, go to the Net Bible. Net, <coughs> Net Bible. They have the Greek. Uh, William, if you want to do that for me real quick. Yeah. Go to Net Bible. Can you speak your man? We've had little uh, Muslim kids that get from where at well, here, but they, right. they, they spoke Aramaic at home. That's, oh, wow. yeah. Totally Aramaic cool. or, or? I, I think it's what? Maybe Aramaic. Aramaic. No, I think. See, I think. No, I, I, I think. Thought, with an old language, I thought they okay. said that. I'll ask Lola. I'm going to take your word for it. Um, yeah, I could be wrong. I trust you. I thought she said when a little girl said that. Okay, let's let's move on real quick. So, Quirinius is not uh, be, being a governor late, uh, later on and earlier is not a problem for us because each time somebody says the Bible is wrong, God reveals something and the Bible is proven right again. Now, the, the little problem that we do have is the census wasn't taken until later on as well. However, it's not a problem for us. Uh, how many know that the United States of America takes a census every 10 years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long does it take for the, for the United States of America to take census? A whole year. <laughs> now, now, we live in 2019, right? Census is coming up next year, every 10 years. So we live in 2019. Census is going to be taken in just a couple of months. Well, it's going to start in just a couple of months. It's going to last throughout the whole year. We are the most technologically advanced people. We have the most technologically advanced instruments for taking census. We, have, we are the most technologically advanced period, right? How long would it take? them, back then, to take the census? Years. Years? So is that a problem for us? No. I'm just talking about historically, uh, before, right before we get into the prophecy of the time. Verse 3. And everyone went to, to their own town to register. Now, there's a small little issue here. When the census was taken, the Romans very rarely would they send everybody back to their own towns. Why would the Jews choose to go back to their towns to register? They wanted to go against their family. According to the family, but it's more about real estate. Because in, in the Jewish law, if you remember Exodus, uh, Numbers, what was the big thing about Real estate. Real estate never left the family. Right. It always stayed in the family. So it's not a problem for us. Usually the Romans would 
the Romans wanted to know how many uh, people are available, how many men are available for fighting, of course, and who, who, who's going to pay some taxes. That's all they really care about. Our government, when it, when it takes the census, what does it care about? How many people are living? How big is our government? How many, how many people can we tax? The love of money is the what? Really? The rule of all evil. How many illegals are they going to count them? No. I'm just thinking that. It's true. We'll, we'll count them as undocumented workers. <laughs> Minister of Syria. Minister of Syria. Okay, I'll take that. The governor could be also known as Minister of Syria. Perfect. Thank you for that. Give me an extra five points for today. <laughs> I have no idea. You'll have to figure that out. So, Well, give him A plus plus. Let's look at verse number four. We, we have some more characters coming up. Who do we have as characters in verse number four? Joseph. Joseph. Who else? David. Well, verse five. William. Mary. Mary. So we have Joseph and Mary. Joseph and Mary, where do they live? Nazareth. Nazareth. Now the prophecy, let's, go, let's start with the prophecies, okay? Um, well, let's start with Isaiah 11 and 1. A shoot will come up from the stump, the stump of Jesse, and his roots, a branch, will bear fruit. Who's Jesse? The father of David. The father of David. Right. See, the prophecy already started and the prophecy clearly states that Jesus is going to be born from David's house, from Jesse's house. Now, why would it say that a, uh, from the stump of Jesse? Anybody has any ideas? Go ahead, William. You have a microphone. Because the... Uh, well, I think William was fine. Let, well, let William say it, and then you can say it. Go ahead, William, quick. Because Jesse was the father of David and... Why would it, why would it say the stump? Stump. What is a stump? Why, why is it, does it say a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse? Because most of Jesse's family had been killed. Brothers and other family of David even. Yep. The bottom line is the Romans are ruling. There's no ruler from Jesse's house, even though God promised David that a ruler will never, uh, will always be on the throne from your house. But yet, because of their iniquities, because of their sin, because of what Israel did, God sent Romans to cut down the tree. There's a stump. When you cut down the tree, there's a stump there. So the, uh, uh, from that stump, from, from, from a point where there is Nobody ruling from Jesse's house, there's a stump. A shoot will, will grow from his roots because the roots are still alive. As a matter of fact, when we, when we read about Mary and Joseph, we find that they were God-fearing people. Their roots, their root system was grounded in God. Let's go to Micah. Chapter 5, verse 2. In Micah uh, 5, verse 2, we read, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah. Why does it, does it specify Beth Bethlehem, Ephrathah? That's where Jesse was from. Well, that's where Jesse was from, but there were two Bethlehems. There were two Bethlehems. And God was very, very specific. Mind you that Bethlehem was the place where Jesse would uh, live, where David was from. It was the house of bread. It was the house or the area where the slaughter, the slaughtered lambs would be born and uh, raised up. But better yet, God specified, by you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, 
though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me the one who will be the ruler over Israel, whose origins are from the old, from ancient times. Now, in this prophecy, when it says from the old, from the ancient times, it literally means from beginning of time. When did time begin? Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God. So here it not, it not only says, it, it tells us that Jesus is going to be born in Bethlehem, but it also tells us that he is the eternal God. Because we can't tell, uh, tell each other that we were here before time began. We were created by our parents. God gave us a spirit, but our bodies were created by our parents. We can't say that we were here before time began. Or can you say we were here when time began? Because we were not. We're not, uh, we're not ancient of days. So who is ancient of days? Jesus. God. And Jesus, here is another uh, passage in the prophecy that proves beyond a reason of a doubt that Jesus is God. In the Lord Matthew chapter 2, verse 23. And he went and lived in the town called Nazareth. So it so was fulfilled that was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. The prophets spoke about Jesus being called a Nazarene. Now the, the word Nazarene could be could mean two things. Somebody who lives in, who lives in Nazareth, or somebody who has dedicated their life to serve God as a Nazarite or a Nazarene. About yeah. yeah. So it could be taken it could be taken either way, and Jesus obviously lived his life to please God, God the Father. But at the same time, so that we don't have any doubts, God has put Jesus, Jesus' parents, for them to originally live in Nazareth. Now, isn't our God amazing? Isn't He just amazing? Now, check this out. Why would Caesar Augustus send out a decree to gather a census? Why? Doesn't he know how much he has uh, conquered? But do you know that God can use anybody? He can use Caesar Augustus. God can use you. God can use me. God can use you. God can use me. God can use you. Am I, you, you, and you, 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 and you. Am I missing anybody? And you, me, you. God can use anybody. It was on, on the heart of of Caesar Augustus to send out a decree to start a census. He didn't really need to do the census. He didn't know there was zero BC. He didn't, he didn't know that the king of kings is born. He had no idea. But when God tells you to do something, do something. If there's something, do it. Just go ahead and do it. Now, we could, we could say that, that that is coincidence. Nazareth, Nazarene, Bethlehem, Ephrathah. It could be a coincidence that this boy and this girl, because technically speaking, we don't know how old Mary was. However, there was a custom that uh, at the age of 12, girls would be given uh, in marriage. And uh, between the ages 12 and 14, they'll be given to marriage. That was the custom of the day. They didn't live as long as we live now. But the Bible in Isaiah 7:14 says something else. Another prophecy. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And will call him Emmanuel. Now, as I was studying for
for the for, for this and uh, doing and I'm doing my prep work. So when I'm speaking up here, I know what I'm talking about. I, I don't look foolish in front of you and anybody else who may be listening. There are there are many other um, stories of mythical stories of uh, ladies. Uh, virgins giving birth to gods. And it, lo it, it almost looks like the Bible is coming somebody else. And most of the people who you, you, who, who you could listen to online, well, not non Christian I'm talking about, they can, they can say that the Bible made this up. Or the Bible copied this from somebody, from someplace else. The only problem with that theory is Isaiah lived way before all of that. Okay. And you know, the devil is very good at doing one thing. Lying. <laughs> He's very good at it. He's very good at copying what God says and, and turning it into what, we want, what he wants us to believe. See, he didn't exactly with, uh, he wasn't exactly truthful with, with Eve. You know what he told Eve? He said, did God say? And that was enough for Eve to, to plant some uh, seeds of doubt in Eve's heart. And Eve was doubting that, did, did I really say this? See, we are so good at uh, memorizing things, but when we're put on the spot to remember something, we usually don't. I'm talking about myself. I don't know about you, but I'm talking about myself. And 90% of other people. Do you know that about 90% of the people in this world are not good at taking tests? You know why? Because our minds can be very easily manipulated. And the teachers are usually good at this. Because teachers usually word a question differently than the way they talk. Why? Well, the teachers want, want us to memorize things. And not only just memorize things, but be able to uh, read what, what this says, process it through our head, and then regurgitate an answer that they taught us. Now the enemy doesn't want to, doesn't want to do that. The enemy wants, wants to um, question God. The enemy wants to put it on a time clock. You better answer me now, in 30 seconds the deal is done. Now when, when you go buy a new car, Someone says, buy a new car. Next time you go buy a new car and they put a clock on you, don't take the deal. You know why? Start walking away. When you start walking away, they'll go get you and offer you a better deal. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I've been a used car salesman. <laughs> the enemy is good at throwing things in our, in, into our minds and to in, 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 even into history, things that would say, well, hold on, um, I don't remember all the all the stories because they make no sense to me at all. All those Greek gods and every other god, little G of course, they had kids and it was just horrible. But here it says in Isaiah seven fourteen, therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign. See, the sign is from God himself. A virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. God with us doesn't mean that God is in us. God with us doesn't mean that um, it's going to be something mystical. God with us means it's going to be Somebody. Now that Jesus has uh, ascended into heaven, he has given us his spirit that dwells in us. It's the uh, spirit of God, spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. But here it says, Emmanuel, God with us. God, in his uh, magnificence, he prophesied. Through the, through the prophets of old. 
And he said all these things. Well, tonight, tonight we just went through just a few of them. There are so, so many more. But I want to leave you with this. It's, it's, and it's found in Numbers 23, 19. If the enemy ever puts doubt in your hearts, if the enemy ever throws um, yeah. those fiery darts at you, fiery darts of doubt. Has anybody ever been hit with the fiery dart of the enemy with the doubt? Come on, every, every yeah. hand should be up. Please remember this verse. November, uh, Numbers 23, 19. God is not a human that he should lie. Not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Keep this, keep this close to you, especially for this Christmas. I don't know why, but my whole sermon was, was built up to this verse. You can look at my notes. This is my last, my absolute last uh, passage. This Christmas, somebody's going to have you doubt Christmas. This Christmas, somebody tried to have me doubt Christmas. I'm your pastor. Somebody tried to have me doubt Christmas this year. One of my friends, he doesn't believe in Christmas. He is a Christian. He, he says that we shouldn't celebrate Christmas because Christmas is not when Jesus was born. So my question to him was, when was Jesus born? Oh, we don't know. We're guessing. Listen, the whole world celebrates evil. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to celebrate good. If the, the whole world doubts Jesus, what are we going to do? We're going to celebrate Jesus. If this whole world goes against us, what are we going to do? Celebrate Jesus. See, a little part of me, when he said, well, you know, he, he sent me this whole uh, nonsense about where Christmas came from. and it's supposed to be some pagan. Something it's something pagan. pagan. It has to do with the solstice. Yeah, it has to do with, with the solstice and uh -oh. some guy named Cor Corpus or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. You know, the, but the enemy used a Christian brother <laughs> to send me a video about the paganism of Christmas. Well, hold on. You know what? You know what I, my final reply to him was? Christmas has become very big. Mm -hmm. Because what do we what what do we do with Christmas now? We commercialize it. It's what my friend called winter solstice. Winter solstice retail merchandising festival. <laughs> somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else uh, said, said something else to me. He called it the, um, the winter uh, sales extravaganza or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That's what Christmas has become. And today I was talking to somebody on, on, uh, on the phone and, and we were talking about, um, about um, Christmas and whether they're, they're ready for Christmas. And, and uh, I said, well, I'm, I'm done with my Christmas shopping. And, and the person says, really? I say, yeah, my wife does all, does all my Christmas shopping. Yeah. And she's like, well, uh, uh, they say, well, wh what is she getting for Christmas? Well, I said, well, I know she's getting an iPhone 11 Pro, and I know that she's getting um, uh, the AirPods Pro, and my kids are helping me everything that, m that my wife bought for herself for Christmas. <laughs> you go, Maria. Teach you me go, how girl. to do that. I don't know what's going on with that story, but... Um, don't wait for your gift. Oh, Buy it to yourself. Uh, yeah, so yeah. But Christmas has been uh, so commercialized that all we think about is gifts. All we think is, well, oh, uh, here, I remember. The reason why I remember the, the, the phone conversation, the person just bought an Amazon Prime uh, account. Amazon Prime is delivery the next day. Or some, some things are delivered the same day, which is ridiculous. Yeah. <coughs> Not so, if you need it. <laughs> yeah, right. It's ridiculous. <laughs> even if I do need it. Nobody's going to die without an oh, iPhone. Nobody's going to die without this water bottle. There's so many of them around. And if, if you need it that bad, go to the retail store and buy the retail store. Don't have to wait for Amazon Prime to deliver it the next business day. <coughs> that includes Sunday. Those 
trucks are out and out all hours of the day. And Incl night. including Sunday. It bothers me because they're 24-7, they're including Sunday. Yep. Give me a day off, please. Anyways. God is not a human that he should lie. Not a human being that, should, that he should change his mind. Does he speak and does not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? This Christmas, when doubt creeps in, remember the prophecies. Go back and watch the video on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you want to watch it. God is not a human that he would lie. There have been over 400 yep. prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament. Every single one of them fulfilled in Jesus. Either at his birth, in his life, or in his death. There's over 400. I just mentioned the three. Did I mention three? How many did I mention three? At least three. At least three, maybe more. Well as well as doubt. Thank you for that. I take notes. Yeah, the whole Bible is about him. The whole, the whole Old Testament is about him. There you go. But there are four, over 400 uh, prophecies that we can point to. Here's the prophecy, here is where, where it was fulfilled. Here's a prophecy, here's where it was fulfilled. I just wonder why the Jews don't see it, but their eyes are blind. But they're blind. Mm -hmm. If they saw, we would have no chance. Mm -hmm. yeah. We as Gentiles, I mean. Yep. Sure. As I finish, 